my name's Sammy Thompson. Some of you know me and some don't. I am a demonstrator for Crafters Companion and I'm also an inkoid for Sheena Douglas. And today I am going to give you some quick tutorials on aqua pen blending with glycerin and also stamping the new Mockingbird Hill range from Sheena Douglas. So anyone who's having trouble with those, keep, just keep watching and uh, hopefully we'll address the problems. Okay, so we're going to start firstly with the aqua blend pen blending with glycerin. Very, very simple, but unless you're shown, obviously it's going to be a bit tricky. Now, as my card that I'm doing with the Mockingbird Hill range needs some panels, I'm going to work on these. I'll show you the measurements for these in a moment when I do the card. So we're going to work like this. I have a selection of pens. Now, I've gone a bit crazy and picked a variety of colours. I've actually, I prefer using uh, a rainbow colour range. I'm going to be going for a bit of a sunset today. So we have our glycerin. I'm not going to show you the brand, but you get this in most chemists. Around about £1.30. I'll just give it the tiniest, tiniest bit on there. Actually, I'll give it a bit more because I'm using several colours. Okay. Glycerin. Here we go. Now, picky colours. We're going to start from the top. I'm going rainbow colours, so we're going to go some purple. Actually, that's Heather. And Peacock Blue. There's so much ink in these juicy, juicy pens. Don't be frightened just to use as much as you need. There's loads in there. Okay. We'll just start with these colours for now. And I'll keep blending down. Now, you need cut and dry foam. Just cut it up into whatever shape you want, whichever's easiest. You can use the blending tools with the round ends or whichever you have. It, it works either way. So we're going to pick up some of the glycerin you need to prime your cut and dry foam don't put too much on otherwise you'll have it just sliding all over the, the piece of paper i have sheen stamping card here in my opinion the best all-round card for everything and i don't just say that because i'm on sheena's team love it okay we need to pick up the ink pick it all up it's fine you might need a bit more glycerin depending You'll get a lovely soft blend with this. You can see shine almost. I'm not going too far down. If you wanted to do more of a random uh, splodgy pattern, that's fine. You'd go all over the page and do all sorts of stuff like that. I've just turned the cut and dry around. I'm going to make it last for two colours. As you can see, it blends so much easier than just distress inks on their own, anything like that. Okay, I'm keeping it fairly stripy. I know that sounds a bit weird, but it will come, all will become clear in a moment. Prime the next piece with some glycerin. I'm gonna pick up the next lot of ink. Use the pens like a tool. They're not just a pen. They have so much ink in them. Use them for their ink in different ways. Just your application that changes each time. I'm not being gentle, I'm being quite random actually. There's no finesse in this. <laughs> no special technique, just not too much glycerin, just enough to prime it. Pick up your ink, blend your colours together. You might want to turn it around and go back over with the other colour. A bit more of an ombre effect. Pretty. You see where they merge they cut another colour. Okay, so just quickly wipe up the these colours. I've used those. I'm gonna move on to the next few. Obviously my cutting board colouring board no. Glass cutting mat is not that big so in the one of the biggest. It's not big enough to do all the colours I'm doing. So we'll do a few at a time. Okay. I know it looks like I'm using a lot, just to show you how it all works. A bit more cut and dry. Pick up some more glycerin. Don't be fussy about it, it doesn't matter. Pick up your ink. Very 
very simple technique this and it's so useful makes your inks go so much further as well you're not using half as much ink as you used to and the blend is seamless beautiful pick up more glycerin let's try the next the next ink another piece this is very monotonous I'm so sorry <laughs> I'm showing you how to create more of a, a sunset -y effect that's subtle like this you can be frightened to move, merge it upwards if you feel it's a better colour you want to blend them a bit more it's your piece of work there is no rule ok next we will quickly wipe them up keep it clean you don't want to merge your colours too much unless you're actually doing it on the card ok just a couple more colours to finish. Oh, hello. That one's alive. I actually need a tiny bit more glycerin here. Oh, okay. We'll use some of that later. <laughs> okay. Prime it again. Pick up your ink. Very, very simple technique. can go in swirly motions or depending on which type of background you want back and forth is fine pick up your ink keep going up and the last one might think got no more room left but there's always a little bit of room Darken the edge. Okay, beautiful. I actually want to do just one more colour. Let's go with some a bit more purple. I think I'm going to go with some purple. I'm not happy with the with the um, top of the card. I want it a bit darker. I'm going to pick up a, a different purple. Oh, pretty. Merge those. back with the other one merge them together go with the blue again there we go okay and you get spotty marks where you stick your fingers don't worry blend it out it's not a problem okay now that's beautiful as it as it is more of our sunset we're going to have it up that way i'm going to do two more panels to match because they go on the card uh, but first i'm just going to show you how to do the faux bleaching with this it works beautifully here we go get your spray bottle piece of cake but we're not going to spray it spray the water into your hand i like a more random <laughs> splotching sometimes it's nicer just to do it with the brush and tap it on Okay, get your kitchen towel. And lots of faux bleaching. Need a little bit more. longer you leave the water on the more it will lift the colour right. that's absolutely
absolutely fine by me. I like that. I'm going to do the other two panels to match and I'll be back in a minute. Right, now we've done both panels and the centerpiece. Just going to ink around the edge just to draw your eye into the centre of the panel. We're using a bit of vintage photo distress ink and cut and dry, just like I showed you a little while ago, but no glycerin with this one. We really just want to darken around the edge, keeping the foam up. You don't want any harsh lines. So you keep it at an angle and you just bring it onto the card from your glass mat or your um what do you call those mats <laughs> the other mats you don't need too much it would just don't want to take away from the color but just to draw your eye in with and focus on the center if you're doing a nighttime scene however you can always do it with black soot distress ink can give it a good nighttime feel but maybe some purples and blues just in the background rather than than a Sunset. Okay, nearly there. Very simple. There we go. There we go. Very nice. Okay, that's for now. I'll just do the panels. Doesn't take too long. Okay. Next, we're going to get to the actual construction of the card. So this is the interesting part. We're doing a very, very simple looking card, but it looks amazing and it really is easy to make. So we're going to take an A4 piece of card. I'm using Sheena card again. It's my fave. So, okay, we've got, as the, uh, the width is eight and a quarter inches, I decided to go along eight and a quarter inches and we're going to score a line okay fold your, your card over and burnish very simple i use my score <laughs> there you go that's my score master now for the next part you're going to need another piece take another a4 sheet do exactly the same you're going to score at eight and a quarter inches this time we're going to turn it over so that we lay the two panels that match over each other. You will fold your, your score line, burnish it, and then we're going to trim off the excess, which I've already actually done. So you trim off the excess so it matches and all the card folds up as one. It's all in a, a square piece. Okay, so as we've done that, we're going to actually just glue it. Let's glue those panels together. Here we have the Call Out All Purpose Glue, which sets like cement. And gives you an extra layer in between so it's my favorite for flat work anytime you're doing flat layers together it's fantastic gives you a bit of wiggle room you can wipe any excess off it's fantastic for that what i can say is always use the right glue for the right job and we certainly have plenty to go around <laughs> there we go okay back to your card obviously the card is this way around but as I'm working on the card, I don't do upside down cards. So I'm going to turn it around. Then we go back to our panels that we've already prepared. Beautiful. We've edged them in the, the vintage photo just to give them a, a nice edge and focus in the middle. We're going to line them onto the panels. Simple as. I'll just quickly glue those down. Again, with the collar. out. Don't forget we used the aqua markers with the glycerin technique for these. There we go. Fantastic. Put that down. Next panel. Before we do the sticking these two panels together, as they're going to be folded like that, the edge may well show as it's all plain white and I don't want it to be a focus so I'm just going to grab the vintage photo again we're just going to edge just down the middle of your crease as you can see 
sheen of card creases so well there's no no fluffing no no, no cracking or anything okay there we go let me get back to our matting layering gluing loads of glue maybe i use a little bit too much but i want it to stick nothing worse than the card that falls apart and it stays last panel sorry this is taking so long feel free to cut me off at any time <laughs> okay there we go aprons are great for wiping your hands As you can see, I have my <laughs> oh, I'm a bit crazy. Okay, you can just see, make sure it all folds perfectly. This is called a Z card. This is what you want to make. Now, with a Z card, it has an extra piece that comes out across and attaches to the back piece. So it will keep it very sturdy and also adds, adds added interest when you want to add extra pieces on. Okay. Just put that piece to the side for a moment. We've cut this two centimetres in width. And if you notice, it fits partly there. So actually what happens is, this is gonna go across there. I'm gonna stick this down first because this is really annoying me. In there. I have pre-cut this. I've actually pre-stamped it too with a stamp from Sheena's Fjord of Gold stamp set, which was from the Perfect Partners first launch. Okay, and then I've just gone over it with some bundled sage distress ink. It's, it doesn't matter, you don't have to be precise with your stamping. This is not going to be seen very much because of the fence is going over the top. Okay, so as the fences go over the top, we're only going to attach this part first. And we're going to try some tacky glue for this. I want it to have a bit more of a grab. Okay. We're going to get the fence. As the fence is going to come up to there, I want it to sit so that it just sits behind the fence. Touch the first panel. This does not get stuck to anything. We keep that, that clear. Okay, we're going to bring this over here, remembering that that's still <laughs> kind of wet. Okay, I'm going to attach the next piece just to this panel, nothing else. How we are at the moment simple as doesn't look quite right at the moment but we're going to build up the seam okay first of all i'm actually going to put the fence on first because although we're not built up the rest of the seam yet it's something that can be drying while we're doing the rest okay these little fence panels are so cute look at these they're amazing now obviously they come they come white i have already cut and embossed several of these I have also stamped them. If you can see, they've actually still, they've already got so much detail on them just from the stamp. So I'm going to show you how to stamp those because sometimes you can think it's a bit tricky and feel very daunting stamping a die cut like this. Always cut your dies first, your die cuts first. Don't stamp and then try and try play target practice with them. It's not going to work. I've already stuck these with some stick and spray ready to play. This is exactly how Sheena does it. Stick them to your glass mat. I'm going to get mine with some. I just wanted a light grey for these. I didn't want. I wanted them to more look like a picket fence. 
so we're just going to ink it up with some London Fog Memento ink. It doesn't really matter what type of ink you use for this job because we're not going to be wetting it or anything. So take your die cut, obviously it's going to be face down. We start one end, don't worry about the other end yet, Measure it, lay it down so it's accurately on top. Use your fingers, you're going to get a bit inky. Do you know what? That's what baby wipes are for. Come along, just pressing down each time. And it starts to move. You need to just adjust it, just slightly. Just till it's lined up again for the next part. Looks tricky, but trust me, a few more goes and you, you've got this. Move it down. There we go. There you go. Perfect. That's how you do it the sheen away. Fantastic. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to, we're just going to lay these very carefully. Bit of tacky glue. Start one end. Oh, hello. I didn't see that. We'll pretend. Okay. actual fact something I wanted to do first <laughs> I've made some trees machine this stuff I've stamped this already I'll show you how to stamp this one in a moment I'm going to stamp it and I want to stick it behind the actual fence a bit more glue a bit too much. Put too much on, just get a bit off with your hand. This is how to fix a problem because we all have those. Okay. There we go. Because that's already been laid down, so there we go. Not a problem. Just quickly. tacky glue now with this fence i wouldn't try laying it next to each other it doesn't quite look right try laying it on top of the last post that way you'll get it lined up and it will be a seamless fence panel all the way along okay this is speed crafting if only i could speed craft this well every day There we go. Don't worry about that one. We'll, we'll fold that. There we go. I promise we'll get to the interesting bit very, very soon. Okay. Now, as this has got a crease in it, make sure you. Find the crease when you're sticking it. Okay, that's where that's going to land. And the next panel, it's quite versatile. You can put it over any edge, you follow it all the way around your project. Fantastic little fence, this. Isn't it short, short? Okay. There we are. That last one. We need one more panel. There we go. No, actually, maybe two. Almost there. I have a very skilled cameraman today. He's hiding. Maybe I shall tell you all about him one day. We're not going to do all of that one because we're going to cut some of it off. Okay, perfect. So just take your scissors, make sure you've got to the edge. There we go. Oh, that's so cute. Look at 
not perfect, but it's bad. Okay, right, now we'll, we'll leave the background for now. We're gonna go on to the die cutting. Obviously, I'm not gonna die cut everything out already um, to, for you to show, to show you, you know how to die cut. But I am gonna show you how to die cut the house. I'm gonna use the cottage. I love this little cottage, it's so cute. And there's so much you can do with it. Okay, my Gemini. We have the purple plate, magnetic shim, plastic shim, die, and your card. In this case, Sheena card. Top plate. Very well loved. There we go. We stroke the rhymer nicely. And she plays nice. This is Jemima. <laughs> Magnetic ship. Don't need that. Just put that on there. Okay. Let's put nicely. Yes, I'm crazy. Okay, look at that. Pulls out straight away. Now be careful when you're taking this out of the actual die. Come in trying to use it because some of the bits very, very fiddly, but beautifully cut. All the beautiful windows. It does come out very really 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 easy. Okay, put the die away. The embossing on that that's so pretty wow okay i actually cut another one as well because i'm going to decoupage this first of all we need to stamp them both one we're mainly going to stamp the roof and the door and everything but the other both. i've already pre-sprayed this with stick and stay no stick away no the purple one stick and spray <laughs> okay stick it to your glass mat Fantastic. Okay, for this one, I'm actually going to go with a, a sepia. Let's do this. What a nice warm colour. Ink it up. This is definitely by far the easiest way to do these extra large stamps. They are amazingly detailed and huge. Okay, so don't try and do the whole thing at once. That is not going to work. I'll tell you why. When the card goes through the, the embossing machine, be it Gemini or anything, and goes with through with a die cutter, it is going to stretch the card ever so slightly, just slightly. So instead of trying to pay dog practice, get the whole thing down in one go, we take it one bit at a time. I suggest we start with the chimneys, line those up doesn't matter about the rest one bit at a time we're gonna move it up slightly and we're gonna work on the roof press it down okay now you need to have a look at the the windows you'll see the the window bars will actually line up if you're very careful I suggest doing those almost one at a time because you'll find the other side needs to be lined up as well. There we go. Okay. There we go. The roof in the middle. Let's try the other windows. There we go. Looks a bit fiddly, but don't forget this is a really big stamp. Take your time, do it properly. It's not hard, it's just a 
bit of target practice with your fingers. Look what you're doing. There we go. Line the door up. And press. Now, if you've missed any pieces, you'll be able to see. Don't worry too much about any extra bits you've picked up. It doesn't really matter. We're going to colour it in a minute anyway. Okay. Any extra bits you miss, you can go back and pick them up. They will still be on the stamp. There we go. Perfect. I'm just going to do that one more time very quickly. Fine. Because I need two pieces so I can die cut them some from the other. Uh, not die cut. Decoupage. Take my pardon. Okay. Try the chimneys first. And then the roof. And then you do your windows. Pro at this. I've been doing it a while. <laughs> okay. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. It is achievable. Do not stress. Just take your time and do it properly. Okay. Right. There we go. We're going to move our house. While I'm here with the inking, I'll just put those to the side. I'm just going to, we're going to stamp quickly with the uh, lamp post. I'll show you how to do a tree as well. Let's grab a couple of inks here. I have some VersaFine inks, which are great for this kind of work. I'm going to go with the tree very quickly, randomly. It doesn't have to be anything special. A bit of brown for the roots. There we go. And I have a tree die already cut and embossed. You can still stamp with them even though they've been embossed. It's amazing. Just pick it up with your fingers. Your fingers are a great tool. They put the pressure where you want it. Okay. Remember to move the tree down or up, whichever way you want to do it as you go to line up the branches a bit at a time press them down there we go lift up you can see i've missed a piece don't stress go back to your die and your stamp find where you've gone press down again and you'll pick it up straight away amazing best kind of inking can't go wrong who needs one of those stamping platforms, eh? <laughs> then we're just going to do the same with the lap post. We're going in with a smoky grey for this one. Didn't glue that properly, but it doesn't matter. Start with the bottom or the top, either way. Work your way up or down. Lean it down as you go. Move slightly. Make sure it fits where it's supposed to. Okay, perfect. Pretty. I like that. I've done two of those and two of the trees. Obviously, you've seen me stick one of the trees down already. Okay. Let me just grab a baby wipe because I have very inky fingers. Very good. Not like me. I'm very, 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 very messy. So it's not like me to clean. Okay, next. Before we start to colour the, the, the house, I want to use these beautiful little stamps that come with the church set. They're little brickwork stamps. They look really funny and really strange. You think, what am I going to do with those? Okay, so we're going to use the vintage sepia again. I'm not going to do too many, but I do, I do think they add a lovely texture to your house. Okay, so... 
this will be my base house because actually I like the roof on that one so I'm going to decoupage that one with the roof so don't have to be precious about where they go especially as I'm going to decoupage the roof it doesn't matter a bit more ink turn it around there we go you can do some secondary stamping as well it's quite nice there we go just a little bit random stamping okay beautiful all right now obviously this is the one we're going to up for my base so as you can see with these dies they have cut lines already Sheena's very clever she thinks of these things because she doesn't like cutting don't tell her I said that okay we're going to snip just along all of these little tabs that are holding the roof on dead easy Come on. can't go wrong saying that I probably would even the same with the with the door we're going to decoupage the door I like that. Just snip that out and the thatch pit on top of the doorway. I think that looks beautiful. Snip the little tabs right there. There we go. Fantastic. The rest you can keep aside. You may want to do the windows as well, but uh, I think that's enough for this point. Okay, now we're going to do some colouring. As you can see, I have all my pieces and we're going to colour with some of, more of the aqua pens. Now, this time, instead of using the glycerin, we're going to just put them directly onto our, our glass mat. Let me just move this out of the way. I'm going to go directly onto the glass mat and pull it out with, some, with a paintbrush and some water. Okay. So, for our roof, I quite like this. Marigold. Look at that beautiful thatch colour. Scribble it on there. Grab me water, me a brush, and get me a piece of picture paper. Okay. Dip your brush in the water. Wipe off most of the water. You don't really want a lot. It's just to give it a little bit of movement. Give it a quick wash. Make it move a bit more. We want a very subtle. Make sure you get it a bit darker over the arch parts. Follow it along. And a bit more of a wash over the rest. If necessary, you can actually use the, the um, pen itself. Go direct to the paper if you want a more intense colour. Beautiful. We're obviously not going to bother colouring the other roof. There's no point. Because we're going to go and stick this on top. Right, let's do the other thatch part. Just get a bit more. Overwash, and then I'll go in a bit darker where the lines are. Sheena's very clever, she's actually put in shading lines wherever she can just to help us with our colouring. If you people like me and can't colour for toffee, hey ho, that's good for me. You can lighten it in certain places if you want to, take a little bit of the colour out. More of a highlight. There we go. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to give the chimneys a little bit of a no, try the other end. Work better. Okay, chimneys just a quick wash, nothing elaborate. Oh, hello. Get attacked. Let's 
just using the chestnut brown. A little bit of water. And we'll go in with a bit of the chocolate for a dark colour. the shaded areas. a little bit of that chocolate brown for some more shading. There we go. Those two done. Just push those to the side. I'm just going to have a quick go with the the door. Actually, I'm going to go direct with this to the door. We're going to grab some more water, blend this out ourselves. More of a wooded feel. I like that door. Beautiful. Okay, we'll keep that like that. I want to keep the windows white, I think. So we're going to go keep those white. We don't need to colour the roof, that part or the door. And I want to do a very soft, subtle pink for the walls. Let's just do that white. Let's get to your blossom. Can't see it much, but trust me, it's there. I'm going to go mostly around the base, wash it out slightly. There we go. Around the bush. This doesn't have to be really technical, really slow and painstaking, just a quick wash over the whole of the house. I'm going to go into some of the darker areas with your pen. Where the most shade would be. I'm going to pull that out. Again, don't worry too much about the roof, you can go over it, it's not going to be seen. There we go. Okay, just nice light pink. If you feel that's a bit too bright, just turn it down again. I'm taking some of the ink out. more of the brown and just highlight some of the brick work I'm 
underneath your windowsills, things like that. Just, just where there's a bit of shading. Speed painting. Or not so speedy. I don't know how quick this is going. Okay. Moving on to, we just want some of the greenery. Greenery is all that's left apart from the roses themselves. Very simple. Quick, quick, quick green. No finesse here. Keep it darker towards the base where it's going to be darkest. This is what they call a summer house. An autumn house, whatever house. So what I love about this range with the houses that Sheena's done, they're not just for winter. They're for any time of year. This is a fantastic summer, autumny night. Okay. I want to just get some more of the brown. Let's do the branches of the trees. Use a nice fine brush. Just give it a little bit more. Doesn't have to be exact. You can see from the stamp exactly where it's going to go. Last but no means least, we're just going to do some of the roses. A nice bright pink. Okay. Now, if you're at Christmas time, you could do white roses. Christmas roses. have blossom this time of year but who knows there we go blend those out make sure I love a lovely whitewashed look but washed out look I should say okay I think that's done. Stop faffing, Sammy. Okay. Let's just clean that. I want to quickly get my... So he's going to go in there. And my other parts, I have coloured. Just remove the brush. Excuse me two seconds. I'm going to take the vintage photo distress ink and as I don't want any white bits showing, I'm very fussy about this. It doesn't take two seconds just to go around the edge. It takes your card from looking amateurish to more professional. Two seconds to just colour it to match in with the rest of the the scene. Okay, and again two with the house. Doesn't matter that that's green. The brown fits in really well. I'm actually going to go over some of the the roof we're not using, just in case you can see part of it. Boom. 
very quick as you can see. There we are. A little bit on the tree. And we can bond with sage. Just distressing for the tree. I don't like seeing the white through the tree, it just doesn't look natural. Give it a, a base colour. But we can still see all the detail. Again, I'm just going to do the same quickly with the, the lamp post. Now I've used the same technique to colour these two pieces. Now these are from Sheena's Old Tree Dye and Stamp set. And this is from the um, Autumn Branch dye set. This is from Sheena's first launch of Perfect Partners. So if you have those, have a play with them. I find them really, really useful for so many different projects. Okay, so now we get to stick the whole thing back together. Yay, we've got all the bits. We have our lovely card that folds up with the fence panel. And we have all our pieces ready. Okay, so we'll start with the tree. Now I like the tree. I want it to go behind the house. So we're gonna use actually we're gonna do it flat so we'll use some tacky glue for this one. But as I place the tree a moment ago it's I noticed that the uh, root was showing through the windows of the house. So we're gonna snip them off. Because you can do that. No chainsaws required. Okay, touch of glue all over the back. I'm not very, very careful with this, I'm afraid, but any excess, just dab it off on your hand. Okay, grab the scissors. It's just this little root here. You're not going to see it because it's behind the tree anyway, behind the house, sorry. So we chopped it. Nice. Okay. Now, as you can see, we're going to position the house roughly about there. Very pretty. Love that. Okay. But I want this house to be more three dimensional. So, we're going to use some foam tape as well as some 3D glue gel. The reason I use both is because 3D glue gel is great, but sometimes when you're when you're sticking a, a project together with layers on, it can get squashed back down again. And it takes quite a while to dry. I want to give it some more structure. Something that's not going to be be able to be squashed. So just a few bits of tape and glue gel. And we're, we're laughing. Here we go. There we go. I also decided that after looking at the house I like the door the way I've done it this way so I haven't kept that one we're gonna throw it in the bin because you can do that there we go a bit more we'll give it structure here a bit more there I know I'm being quite excessive but I'd rather it was stuck properly. Okay. Pull all your tabs off. Nails really help. Pretty. <laughs> okay. If you can't use your fingers, you can use some tweezers. It doesn't take long. There we go. I have my 3D glue gel in the syringe, ready. Just plus, place it in different places, just to give it support and to obviously make it stick where you want it. Okay. And for placement, hover over the image. You make sure you've got it where you want it. You don't want to put it down and then. Let's move it. Okay, quite like it there. 
once in place press where you know the foam pads are you don't want to press down on the glue gel I've left the door so that it opens just slightly I think it was cute you can open it shut it whatever you like now you might notice also that I've actually put some just a light touch of the King Gold Gilding Wax uh, over each piece. Just obviously, just a really tiny amount all around the edges. It just highlights each edge and it, it makes it look more like an evening sun setting. Right, let's put the roof on. Now, I wouldn't put this on flat. I quite like shaping my projects because life isn't flat, is it? So give it a little bit of shape with your fingers. Don't be frightened, it's just card. It's not gonna, you know, run away screaming. Ah, sorry. <laughs> I need food. <laughs> there we go. Just gonna stick one piece of foam tape on there and some frizzy glue gel. Big globes. sure you do get this kind of in the right place otherwise it may look a little bit odd okay beautiful as you can see we've got a sculpted roof there just shaping it slightly really helps to give it more dimension and that's why Sheena designed it like this to be decoupaged do the same with the little thatch over the um, over the doorway Tiny bit of 3D foam. A little bit of glue gel. There you go. Fantastic. I love that. Right. Only things we have left to do, we've got a, a lovely branch. Obviously, I showed you this branch of Sheena's. I've actually doubled it up because I want it to have a bit more structural integrity and strength. So I've added that. We're not going to glue, obviously, the bits that are hanging over. So we've kind of made to make a note of where you want your glue. I have inked the back as well because part of that will be showing. Just with a bit of vintage photo and some gathered twigs. Okay, position this where you want it. Don't be frightened of overhanging. We can chop parts off if they're not where you want them. Like we did the fence. Okay. we go just gonna give it a little trim you can leave it but I want it all to be within the one piece once you've trimmed it just grab your um, stress ink if I can find mine again it's just the walkies but I'll use this one oh honestly there we are Every vintage photo, just just give it a quick edge. I really hate those edges being white. Okay. Now I actually did stamp a sentiment already. Now I've used one of Sheena's heart petals from the Creative Flower range. I've cut off the tab off the end, and we've stamped one of the sentiments that goes with the uh, cottages and the houses beautiful just in vintage sepia and we've inked around one edge lovely heart love that okay i'm gonna actually three-dimensionally stick that down too because i can we're gonna put this sitting perched just in the tree, just like this. Don't be 
front to move your branches and settle it in. Just there. Beautifully. Okay. And last but no means least, we're going to stick two lamp posts and another of the trees already stamped and inked. Now I want these to stand on this bit that sticks out, shall we say. So I'm going to stick this behind the fence. And it's going to go... Don't worry about any extra glue, it will dry clear. Okay, beautiful. And our little lamp posts, fabulous. One of them we're going to have almost covering up the edge, but not quite. And our last one, as we open this up, I'm going to put on the other side of the card here. And I will use the tacky glue for that on the top. And some 3D glue for the bottom part. And I think our house card is finished. So we've covered everything I think from blending with aqua pens to, with glycerin and some faux bleaching with that and also making this beautiful Z card and how do we stamp the houses from Sheena. I hope I've covered everything. Any more questions please feel free to contact us on I am a crafter's companion or Sheena's in Kets, or you can contact me, Sammy Thompson. Thank you. Down there.